Thank you for watching videos by FamilyTravelPhotos.com. In this episode, I will continue a series of videos that prepare you to fly the unique Q500 or any other drone with great ideas to help protect yourself from legal and financial problems as you fly your quad. This episode is part of a series of videos designed to help you fly safely and successfully. While it's part of a video series for unique Q500 owners, this particular episode applies to DJI Phantoms, 3D Robotics Solos, Blade Chromas, and almost any other aerial video drone. Let's get started with Episode 5, Protecting Yourself. Every day you hear stories about people having accidents with drones, flying near commercial aircraft, or using drones inappropriately. Thanks to the acts of a few stupid drone flyers, enhanced by the media's obsession with sensationalizing drone stories, most people have a great deal of mistrust about our hobby. This is why I emphasize safety and understanding of the laws. In this episode, I will take that concept one step further with ideas that will help you to protect yourself in the event of an accident or if you are accused of flying inappropriately. My ideas could be the difference between your warranty being honored or not. They could support you in the event of a lawsuit or a fine. They could even keep you out of jail. My first recommendation concerns your choice of flight locations. When picking a place to fly, it's a good idea to make sure there are no restrictions to fly there. The Q500 has geofencing that restricts the aircraft from flying near airports, but this does not include 100% of the airports in the United States. This holds true for the DJI Phantom as well. You cannot rely on the firmware geofencing to keep you out of trouble. Before you fly, go to the website Do Not Fly Drones Here. The link is below. This web page provides a map of no-fly areas, including larger airports, military installations, and more. You can zoom in to the street level on this map and even search for addresses. Checking this map will help you to avoid flying where you shouldn't. The Do Not Fly Drones Here page is a great tool, but like the Q500's firmware, it is not comprehensive. When planning to fly in an area you're not familiar with, it's not a bad idea to view the location in Google Maps. Zoom out on the map and check the surrounding area to look for smaller airports. If you find one, you can measure the distance from that airport to your takeoff spot to see if it falls within 5 miles. You know from my previous videos that you should do things like Know the rules of flying by visiting knowbeforeyoufly.org Fly in safe conditions and pay attention to the weather, particularly wind. I also explained in great detail that there are several steps you should perform before every flight. So how do you make sure that you perform every step on every flight? The solution is to have a written checklist. For your convenience, I have provided my own checklist in PDF format that you can download at the link below. Use it or create your own. By the way, if you fly a Phantom, Solo, Chroma, or any other drone other than the Q500, you can easily modify my checklist to your specific platform. Print off your checklist and put it in the plastic front pocket of a three-ring binder. Keep this binder with your aircraft. Then, when you get ready for a flight, get out this checklist and go step by step. Use the checklist and you'll never miss a step. Now let's talk about taking defensive flying to the next level. Not only should you fly safely, I encourage you to document what you're doing. You can do all the right things, but in the event of an accident or a false accusation, if you don't have any evidence, you'll have a hard time proving your case. Smart pilots document their flights in a logbook. I keep a log sheet of every flight I make, tracking a wide range of details about the flight. The book UAS Pilot Log Expanded Edition Unmanned Aircraft Systems Logbook for Drone Pilots and Operators gives you an exhaustive log sheet to track your flights. You can always create your own log sheets if you prefer. With my logbook, I can show a history spanning several months where I flew safely and documented what I did. 
This logbook is evidence as to what you've done and it supports your veracity and commitment to following safety and legal requirements. In some cases, I even print off maps from the Do Not Fly Drones Here map and Google Earth and those go into my logbook as well. So where do I keep this logbook? Remember that three ring binder that has the pre-flight checklist on the cover? That's where my logbook goes. It's a simple solution to keep the log sheets in the notebook with the pre-flight checklist. That said, I'll admit, filling out log sheets before you fly can be a burden and it might not fit your schedule, but you can't rely on memory for all those details, so what do you do? I've found the easiest solution is to record all the information literally on the fly, so I can fill in the log sheet later on. This also gives me an undeniable record of what I've done during my flights. I purchased an inexpensive action camera to be my flight log camera, which I use to record each pre-flight and flight. I own a GoPro camera, but it doesn't have the time date stamp feature that I wanted for my logs, so I bought an SJ cam just for this purpose. When I get to a launch site, the first thing I do is start recording with the flight log camera. I record all my pre-flight steps, showing that I'm following my checklist carefully. Battery for today. Uh, the controller is charged. I've got the re camera recording. I also recite the transmitter data before takeoff, so I don't have to remember it later. Okay, I've got 12.4 volts, 15 satellites on the aircraft, 9 on the transmitter. I continue to record as I fly, narrating what is taking place, how high and how far I fly, everything I'm doing. Then I record the landing to show my aircraft came back without incident. The other end of the building, I went up to 175 feet approximately. It was about an 11 and a half minute flight. <clears throat> And uh, I'm currently at 11.3 volts. I'm gonna take off and try to do the same with this building over here. After that, you can fill out your log sheets at your convenience, using the flight log camera video as a reference. Recording the pre-flight and flight accomplishes several things. First, it proves that I'm doing everything on my checklist as documented on my flight log. It also shows how I did things. No one can accuse me of skipping steps or doing things improperly. That evidence alone could be the proof I need for my warranty to be covered. There are more benefits. If someone confronts you during your flight, you will have a video record to protect you from false accusations. No longer is it a question of their word against yours. Also, let's be honest. If you know a camera is watching every step you take, don't you think you'll be more careful about following the checklist and avoiding risks? The camera helps to keep you more disciplined. Initially, I mounted the camera on a tripod. The tripod is up and recording. I found that I move around quite a bit as I fly, so my flight log camera was missing a lot of each flight as well as my commentary. I tried the head mount for the GoPro and never could get the straps adjusted to stay on my head. I decided to mount the flight log camera on the side of a hard hat. I used a curved GoPro mount and a couple of extension pieces along with the mounting bracket that came with the SJ cam. Now the camera stays with me as I move around the flight area. Even better, it's always looking at what I'm looking aircraft. at and it's close to my face so it records every comment. Wind speeds at 6 miles per hour. How you mount your camera is up to you. The important thing is to make a video record of your flights to provide the evidence you need in the event of false accusations or accident investigations. Besides, you never know what your camera will catch. While running a test flight, I captured a minor hit and run accident with my Q500 and my flight log camera. I turned the video over to the police and the insurance company for their investigations. My last suggestion on this video is very simple. Join the AMA. With your membership, you receive flight insurance coverage. Just remember, this is not coverage for your aircraft, but for any damage your aircraft causes. Does all this seem like a lot of bother? Filling out log sheets, recording pre-flights, 
How much time does all that take? Well, recording your flight and pre-flight adds less than a minute to each flight. Filling out flight logs takes five to 10 minutes. Just think about the police asking you questions after your aircraft crashes and how much better you'll feel if you can prove you followed good, safe flying procedures. To me, a couple minutes of effort is a small price to pay for bulletproofing myself against legal problems. Give it a try. I think you'll find it will be well worth your while. This concludes episode 5 of my video series for the unique Q500 owners. I hope you found this video to be helpful. I've posted other videos that are linked below. Be sure to click those links to learn more about flying your drone. It's easy for you to support my channel by hitting the like button below. It's free and it improves my video's rankings. It also helps my rankings if you subscribe. And if you do so, you'll be notified when I release more videos in the future. Got any questions or ideas for future videos? Your feedback in the comment section below is greatly appreciated. Thanks for watching.